Lee. Uh, I work for the services business team at uh, Rotherham College. Uh, so my, my role is really to sort of work with uh, sort of young young people and students from the college to try and help them sort of move into apprenticeships. So I've had the, the pleasure of working with uh, Emma and Kirsty now for over the last sort of last year really, uh, from when they first, first sort of started with uh, looking at apprenticeships, coming through a recruitment process and being successful in uh, securing a job with the NHS, with Rotherham NHS Foundation Trust. Uh, they're, they're doing an absolutely fantastic job on their apprenticeship, they're working in a whole variety of wards. We've actually got 17 apprentices that are working with the NHS at the moment. They're the first uh, clinical healthcare apprentices that the NHS have put in and worked with Rotherham College on. And to be honest, guys, you're doing an absolutely fantastic job, so, so well done. So, so as, as part of uh, their apprenticeship, we've actually entered them into something called the Braffe Challenge. Now, the, the Braffe Challenge is a, a national apprenticeship challenge. It's got the likes of HSBC, Pepsi, and other sort of massive global organisations uh, in there. And it's all about trying to find the best apprentices uh, in, the, in the UK. So, so these guys have basically been working on the challenge now probably for the last sort of month or so and the challenge is all about trying to raise awareness of apprenticeships, how good apprenticeships are, the value of apprenticeships and really sort of letting people know, people like yourselves who are sort of going down the health and social care route and trying to build a career in this but also just letting you know about the value and the options available that, that you can sort of access through an apprenticeship and try and get you into employment. So they're going to tell you a little bit about their experience. So these are real life guys, not sort of college tutors uh, uh, and things. So basically these guys have sort of been through the GCSEs, they've perhaps done A-levels or have done health and social care similar to you guys. And then they've made that decision to transfer into an apprenticeship, secure a position with the Rotherham NHS. And like I say, they're doing a fantastic job. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about their experiences and hopefully let you know, uh, hopefully get you excited about it and maybe you can work again in the future. So I'll pass you over to Emma and Kirsty. Um, I'm Emma, I'm 18 and I were actually in your position last year. I were on Health and Social Care Level 3 and I think it got to this time of year where I was in meltdown mode because I didn't know what to do. I got declined at all five universities because I wanted to go to paramedic practice and each one of them said that I didn't have the experience. And it was my friend Tasman, who was actually on the same course as me, who said, why don't you apply for this, this apprenticeship? I was like, oh, I'll give it a go. So I applied, we did an interview stage, we did functional skills, and I only got level one, so it's not as if you don't need fully maths and English. And then I got onto it. I mean, I work for the ophthalmology department, within the hospital which is to do with your eyes and I love it like I go in you see everyone same and it's really good fun but each of us come from a different background we've got a full-time mum who does it and yeah, yeah. I'm Kirsty like Charlie says I'm a part of the primary care centre and audiology department which is based at Walking Centre we, uh, I'm involved with both paediatric and adults, so I get to see a wide range of things. My background, I went over through school, did A-levels, come out with alright grades, I suppose. Like Emma, I just didn't have the experience. I had got five days, which did help like, to get interviews and things like that, but it's just not enough. You need as much as you can, and so that's why I applied for this, my sixth form tutor I guided to, and then that's where I am today, pretty much. I think people panic because people think that apprenticeship is only like two years. This is only a year course and you get an MVQ out of it. Do you ever come in clinical? Not many clinical, but it's mainly no. like building and business and stuff like that, but it's not. There's a lot more opportunities for us now from where we are. Like this, I think one per, I think one of them has been given a job at the end of it and she found that out in <laughs> she found that out in January that she got a full time job and this cost up until the end of September. So you've got your opportunity to develop and she's already been offered to do the level three MVQ, which is higher up so you can apply drops more and you're not just limited to your no. own. I've been to London, I'm going to Dublin in a few months' time and teaching and things like that. It's not you're not just limited to your own. You'll learn a lot. It's basically a couple of months we were doing like specialist stuff. So it's quite mm -hmm. quick and you do get you into it if you've got a good job. <coughs> and everyone's lovely. Like you can go up to any doctor, 
any nurse within the hospital, even if you don't know them. And you're give part you a of the team, aren't you? They are, yeah. you? You are part of the team. A lot of places say that you're not, but we are. You're part of the team and you work part of the team. You go on team dues and God knows where else, and we're in Berlin and Christmas dues and stuff. You don't think you would, but you do. You become part of it. <coughs> part of the family that works there. And it is another way of getting into uni. So like if you are wanting to do nursing, then if you do this, <coughs> you're gaining the clinical experience. Some of you might even go into theatres, which I do a lot as part of my department. I do a lot of SCABU, which is special baby unit, testing the eyes and everything like that. So you think that you're only stuck to one part, you're not, you go into different wards. Like we have outpatients that we have to travel to, inpatients to. I take patients to Hallamshire, Northern. So you do travel and they've got to trust you with that one patient who's severely blind. Or deaf. Or deaf. Yeah. <laughs> so either way, you've got a lot of responsibility, but it's good responsibility.